All right, guys, here we go. We're headed backstage to Passion Play of the Four Corners. I've got a great friend with me today. This is my good buddy, Jerry Hughes. We've we put in a lot of miles together doing Passion Play, especially right here in the Four Corners. I remember when, uh, when we first came to the community, they invited Jerry to come out to a meeting and he brought his hammer, he brought his tools. He was ready to work and what I handed him was a script. And uh, Jerry was willing to jump in and get involved. He took a place on stage that first year and then began to work toward backstage. This is such an organized piece that we're gonna show you today, backstage, and I'm so glad to have Jerry with. Jerry, how's it, how's it working for you back there? Well, Stan, I tell you what, 20 years of at least being in this, it's been a blessing. Um, every year is a different challenge, of course, but we just love what the Lord has blessed us with, our gifts, talents, everything. So everything you see here, somebody's uh, devoted a lot of their time. That's such a, yeah. such a great point that Jerry makes. You know, every costume that's shown, every prop that's been built, every set that's been painted, it, it, it comes with a lot of love. Yeah. And I believe with all my heart, Jerry, that that's yeah. reflected in, in what people see in the seats. It's going to be an exciting journey here this afternoon. We're going backstage to Passion Play, the Four Corners. It's just the guy to give you the tour. When we was talking earlier about the props, and we got stage, we got behind stage, A or B, and we store everything behind the scene uh, that needs to go back and forth. So at this point in time, you can kind of take a look at some of the bigger props that we have, tables, benches, uh, yeah, scourging posts. I mean, we, we get everything on left side, right side, and we got a crew on this side that takes care of right side and our side is the left side of the stage. So everything has a place back here as it does out front. So when we, when we start moving everything, we have it marked. It, it has a home to go to to put it on stage where it's in the right place. Hi guys, we're over on the left side of the stage. Uh, this is home for me, for uh, three or four other guys that uh, work over here. We get the bigger props, and uh, kind of want to run through and show you what we have. Uh, I don't know if you can see back there, we've got the crown of thorns. Uh, we got the little bench there that we put Jesus on. Uh, we got the ladder that the Roman Jews was laying here to take him off the cross. Uh, we got a bench here that the disciples use in the remembrance scene. I wanted to kind of show you uh, how this thing works. It's a fold-up bench, and when we're done, we want to make sure we have everything stored back in a trailer that is compacted. And so my brother Miller Glass, he come up with this idea, and I helped him with it. This bench folds up. You can put two good sized guys on that bench and it, you know, it'll hold them up. So that's just one of the cool props that we get to work with. More trees and rocks. I mean, our rocks are, are really easy to work with. They don't weigh very much, but they look really good. So everything you see, there's there's been a, a hand on it to, to get it built. And most of the stuff, it just continues to last. I mean, we're, we're blessed to have a door that's been able to use in the uh, remembrance scene for 20 plus years right now. So it's been really fun. Hi guys, uh, we're here with uh, our father. We named this uh, Big Mama because she's big. Uh, we used a semi-truck fuel tank to build this thing out of years ago. 2005, I think it was. Uh, come up with the ideal from the stuff that Stan and it brought down the first year from Denver. They kind of showed us what they were using, so we worked off that ideal and made it bigger. And uh, Big Mama, she puts out a lot of fog. We use uh, dry ice and hot water. 
Uh, we heat the water to 145, 150 degrees. We have a fan that was donated to us from uh, Gasco. Uh, Curtis gave us that. We put it on here. It's uh, off a of furnace. So we use use parts, any kind of thing that will work for us to make, you know, to make things uh, go forth, to perform good for us. Uh, it's got PVC pipe, 4 inch. It's got uh, controls for the fan. And inside is a barrel. And there's a handle now here that we load it up at the right time when somebody says go. We dump the dry ice into the hot water, turn the fan on, and it blows the fog out. So hopefully everybody kind of gets an idea of what a fog machine uh, does. But you wouldn't imagine it looked like this. So this is what we got, and it works good. We have a red light up here that uh, we use to be able to see back here. We don't use too many white lights because uh, it goes through the areas it shows up out on the front stage, so the red lights don't don't let you uh, be seen back here. But yet, it's it's enough light we could work in. So again, we make this home for the week of uh, as we do the play. Uh, we eat here, we uh, pray here, we <laughs> we we have good fellowship at time back here. We work hard at it, and we just love it and enjoy it. So. Another important stop backstage, right, Jerry? Yes. <laughs> Tell you what, this is great. The way uh, I'll have to let you know his name, Pastor Tom. I think <laughs> you might know him, Stan. I know him. <laughs> we call him PT for short, but it is right. another important stop backstage. It's a tools tools place, uh, a tool stop, uh, a, what you, a tool bench. Tool, yeah, supply. <laughs> I'll tell you what. If everything has a place, when it goes out. You use it, you bring it back, it comes back too. It'll save you a lot of frustration. It's true with our props. Gary's been describing some of that for you backstage. You've got a backstage position. You've got an onstage position for every prop. That way your prop people know where to go to pick it up, to put it on. We've got to equip them. Same thing here, Jerry. Just describe yeah. some of the pieces that we got on the tool table well, here that you guys end up using all the time. Well, we, we keep a uh, wire. That's a necessity. We've got screws, clamps. What, what, what can you do without baling wire? Well, Not really, much, right, Jerry? Uh, duct tape and baling wire, we can put this set together with it. Got to have the duct tape. <laughs> we actually, when we were in uh, one of our locations overseas, I think I'm maybe talking about uh, uh, India. India. We had duct tape there, and it was an amazing new addition to what they were doing on that side. I, I don't know how you do without, but yeah. they're amazing folks in India. Also, we've got... Uh, what you got going here, Jer? Uh, those are clamps, uh, spring clamps. Mm -hmm. Anything breaks that you got to put back together pretty quick, uh, these will do it. Uh, maybe a piece of duct tape on it or wire. These are uh, these are one of my favorite tools right here. This is uh, PTs. I'll put it back. I promise. But uh, these are great big pipe clamps. Yeah, pipe clamps. And boy, these come in handy whenever you're trying to set a stage. If you're trying to bring some pieces together, of course, you're able to slide this in, dial it up, and then, you know, put the bolts in it, whatever. Yeah. But all of these have a purpose, and they have a place. Yeah. Be sure that's true at your passion play. If your tools have a purpose, and they have a place, so you can get to them easily and get them to the folks who need them. Yeah. What else? What else we got here, John? Uh, extension cords, you never have enough. I mean, it seems like we, we go and get extra every year, but... Right. You know, they, they always have extra uh, extension cords, screws. I mean, we got tons of bolts because you just never know when you're going to need something. Uh, bolts, things break. Nuts, washers, yeah. use a lot of these. Just kind of take a little inventory of, of what you're setting up in your location. It looks different every place you go, yeah. Jerry. We're using uh, primarily for uh, our, our backdrops here, our stage anyway, we use, we use wood products. Sure. We've been to locations where they use metal. Uh, they've got folks who weld and that's what's available. So that's what you use. That's exactly right. I mean, you, you take what you got and uh, you can put it together one way or the other, whether it's wood or metal. But Another amazing tool in your hand right here, Jer. Oh my goodness. Gotta have them. This is the zip tie, right? <laughs> Whenever we're running lights, whenever you're running cable, such a great tool to, uh, to, to help things stay where they need to be. 
oftentimes we're, we're doing two things backstage. I, this occurs to me, and I, I know we've done workshops on this before. We are increasing flow and we are reducing distractions. We're doing that all yes. the time. Minimizing the distractions and maximizing the flow of the presentation. Sometimes a, a simple little tool like this that holds a wire in place instead of it dangling down in front of a light. Yeah. It's an amazing thing and it's so simple. Yeah. And uh, be sure you've got some of those. Yeah. Uh, we don't have our short ladder here, but short ladders yep. for short people. Yep. It's a necessity to have because you're reaching up above you. And you, you know, you just gotta have. Them. You gotta have those short ladders. You gotta have that eight-foot ladder. Yeah. Depends on how high you're going, but uh, thinking ahead and pulling those tools together when you hit your location. Hi guys, we're behind the stage that we set up just to give you an idea of how everything sets. We're about 42 inches off the concrete floor here is our stage. And then on top of this stage, we put scaffolding. The scaffolding is eight feet of scaffolding to put another platform on. And that's our upstairs room. Uh, there's a lot to this. I mean, it, it, took a, it took several years there to get this figured out what was the easiest, the best materials that we could get at the time. And we found this scaffolding that was donated to us. Uh, it worked out great. It takes up less room in the trailer when we store it. Uh, our platforms are made from two by four by four by eight sheets of uh, OSB. And these stairs, uh, PT built these stairs in his garage, brought them in and they work perfect. Uh, it takes us up a little over 12 feet from where we're at to the top level up there. And uh, they're really safe. That's, uh, you did an excellent job on them. So to give you an idea of how we get there, we take these stairs to get to the up, upper room. Here we are guys, upstairs, second level. For the passion play of the four corners, we've been working backstage. What's set up behind me right now is actually our temple facade. This is ready to go for scene one, Good Friday, 2022. We're ready to go, but this is so much more than what you can see on the surface. This all opens up and it becomes our upper room for the disciples in the Last Supper. And it also becomes our upper stage for Pilate's court. When he's here and dealing with the Sanhedrin, when he comes to the place where he says, take him, crucify him, I find no fault in him, that all takes place from this upper level. Now we're gonna go backstage and we're gonna show you what's inside. Hey guys, uh, we're upstairs. We moved to the back room here where we're gonna show you the setup for the Last Supper. Uh, this is one of our tables. It matches the benches. Uh, it's designed to fold put together like that and the girls my wife Carlene uh, Danny and a couple other girls work up here with her they set this up and they make it look so nice I'm really really proud of them and they keep everything organized uh, I mean there's more behind me here behind this wall we'll show you here in a minute but uh, these tables uh, they mean a lot to us because the love that was put into them when we built them, and uh, they've lasted. Uh, these walls right here open up, and it gets big up here for us. I mean, there's a lot of room, really. It doesn't look like it right now, but when the outer walls open up, it's a good-sized room. So. Okay, guys, you can take a look down through here. You'll see a large amount of small items but they all add up they need need every bit of it from uh, our juice to grapes that we put on the table uh, we got bowls everything that you need up here the benches for them to set on uh, we got the little scribe table here for uh, Marcus I reckon he's the this guy sits behind this. Um, I mean, it's just amazing, the small items, how 
quick they add up to fill up a truck. So whatever you got that you're going to use, I mean, just think of it as, uh, as the best that uh, anybody has. It doesn't matter whether it's made of plywood or plastic. It looks good up here. It's going to get the story told, and people aren't really paying attention to what it's made of. They're listening to the story, and that's the most important. Here we are with a view from the upper room, stage right, Passion Play of the Four Corners. As long as we're here, let's just go ahead and scan out over the seats. Of course, we are praying every day from the time we begin rehearsals to the time we take the stage for the people who will fill those seats, that they come and hear the message of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The flags that we display over top, I think that's an important element too when we're able to communicate that what's taking place in our location is not isolated to our location. It's part of a great big family, communities around the world who are sharing the passion play together with us. All right, guys, here we are continuing that backstage tour, passion play of the four corners. We visited our props. We've visited a tool table. One of the other important elements that we've got backstage, of course, would be technical when it comes to microphones. The location where we're working, uh, the Passion Play today, in Farmington, New Mexico, is a vast, vast building. It's huge. Not possible to do this location without microphones your audience would never be able to hear. So, we began collecting microphones years ago, and uh, at this point, I know you can see all of these laid out on the table. We have a total of 20 microphones today. I think we started out with six. We did what we could where we could. We began to rotate those microphones between the actors. Every year or so, we pick up another and another and another. Today, we've got a total of 20 of these. And if you can get a, a decent look at this table, you'll notice that every battery pack has a coinciding space on the table. So we've got Jesus, we've got Peter, we've got James, we've got John. If you come over and take a quick look at this with me, Jerry, there's actually a couple of these that have two names on them. We've got Marcus and we've got Bartholomew. They both fill the same space. Why is that? Because we rotate those microphones. Marcus is on in a single scene. Bartholomew is on in scene two. Marcus in scene six. It's possible for those actors to share that microphone. We're getting the most use out of those mics that we possibly can. We got Matthew and the Handmaiden also sharing a microphone. We've got um, several of these others at this point that we've been able to isolate them and, and, and give them just to Caiaphas, just to Annas, just to Jesus, and that makes it work. But guys, uh, something to consider when you're putting your passion play together in your community, miking for your actors. Long as we're here taking a look backstage at the passion play of the Four Corners, I wanted to take just a little bit of time to describe a piece you don't have to have but it's a nice addition and a lot of love went into creating what I'm standing beside today. You know, for years when we were doing the Passion Play, I, and, and when we were traveling with the Passion Play, I would see carts like these in countries around the world. And I would say to my wife, Linda, we need some of those carts at home. Well, lo and behold, here just a couple of years ago, Ted and Donna, some dear friends of ours out of the Four Corners, took some time with the picture that I had to build a cart. And it, and it works. I'll, I'll show you. It works. We could take this thing, we could wheel it in from the back. <clears throat> Typically what we've done with this is just set it in place for scene one, representing a marketplace, both stage left and stage right for the passion play. Where this really gets interesting is when you get into the details. <clears throat> I'm pulling this out today. This looks like a fish. Donna found a piece of fabric. Feels like I've got some beads inside of this fish, but that looks like a fish. And to everybody who's in the audience, they would of course understand what we have represented here. Of course, the fruit, often you can pick these up, garage sales. Uh, you can pick them up at a secondhand store, <clears throat> but you've got representation of fruit on this table. 
Also some baked loaves of bread that have been uh, covered with a, uh, a shellac uh, that keeps them and preserves them for use season after season. So <clears throat> we've got the garlic uh, that's represented over here. It's just a great little marketplace that takes <clears throat> what was formerly just an open area and it creates a feeling that you are in a, in a city, you're in a place that's different than, <laughs> than, than where you came from. We're in Jerusalem, we're outside the temple, we're near the temple of Jerusalem, and all of this supports that feeling. And again, a lot of love went into making these pieces to tell the story to our audience. All right, guys, here we are, working a little different angle on backstage for just a few minutes. One of the elements you're going to need to share your passion play, actually two elements, you need two follow spots. Different brands, different manufacturers, but they're all pretty much the same. Um, the throw, the distance from the light to the stage, typically 80 to 100 feet is pretty standard for us. That's what we've utilized in the past. Simple enough, you're gonna recognize on the side here, you've got a selection of colors that you can work with. Primarily for this presentation, we're using white, we're using blue. Simple enough, somewhere on your on your unit, you will have a on switch that brings the light up. I'm going to have Jerry pan to the stage here for just a minute so you can see what we're doing with the light. I'll spin it around. And you can see on the stage that we have the ability to focus that light. Let me bring that in. By sliding one or two of your adjustments around, you'll find the ability to, to focus your light. You see the nice crisp edge that just came to that light as I focused it. You also have the ability to tighten up the yoke that that sits in. It gives you a little more freedom with your hand so you don't have to hold it so steady. But then you have the ability here to open or to close to tighten up your, your spot. And we use these for two purposes. Passion play for us, we use these to cover a soloist. Notice when I bring the light down and I'm covering the soloist, we would be able on the stage to lower the lights, to move our props, to make a transition, and then to come back to the stage. Say you, you were in scene one at the, at, the, um, at the temple. Scene two, you were opened on the top and now you're looking at the Last Supper scene. So we utilize these to get people's focus where we really want it to be, and we use it to distract them from the things that we don't want them to see. Simple little concept, it's, it's, it's theater. Uh, we're by no means professional when it comes to theater, but we do understand flow. And the follow spot is a huge part of helping us to keep people's focus where we want it to be. Guys, a little while ago, Jerry gave you a, a tour backstage. We took a good look at a, a tool we call Big Mama. It's a great big fogger that works with hot water and dry ice. Upstairs here, uh, usually before we begin our presentation, this is an extra. It's not necessary. We did the year, we did the passion play for years without this. But we added it because it's a nice touch and it makes the lights respond differently. It, it, it's, it's really a special piece, but it, it's a hazer. This particular model that I'm looking at here is made by American DJ. Simple enough, it takes haze juice, and that's all specified for each and every unit, each and every manufacturer, but it's a simple touch of a button. But this uh, starts off every afternoon, and it begins to create a haze that our lights shine through. And it gives a great effect especially for uh, the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, the cross scene, you can see the lights, they're just pronounced, they're shining through the haze. And it, it brings a very special effect to what we do. Again, not necessary, but a nice addition. And it's a different kind of fog than the Bama produces back in the back. To be quite clear on all three elements, we use three kinds of fog. Dry ice fog, we have a chemical fog that, that hangs, and we have a haze that just covers the whole area. Looks like a looks like a um, a weather system has moved in, if you will. You're shining your lights through the fog. It's a beautiful effect. 
You know, one of the other important elements to telling our story is, is the empty tomb. You have to have a tomb, we have to put Jesus in the tomb, and we have to discover that empty so we can get to that important part at the end, telling everybody he's alive. Behind us is, uh, is an amazing addition to what we do here in the Four Corners. Jerry, tell them what you got here. Okay. Stan, I tell you what, we got a, I'm just kind of joking, but we have tomb will travel. <laughs> it's, it's a tomb mounted on a trailer that we built in our shop. We got the idea from all the rest of the stuff that we've been doing that the easier we can make it, the easier it is to store. Mm -hmm. So the tomb previously was had to be in four or five sections, took down, put together. This tomb, uh, we take the tarps off of it, put the rock on the front, and it's 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 pretty versatile. You know, one of the, one of the amazing things about this tomb, Jerry, and I, I don't want to neglect this. It's not only a prop or a set that we use for our portion of telling our story. It's also storage. Yeah. So when yeah. we're done, all of these elements, many of these elements that are sitting here, end up inside, right. tarped, stored for next year. We bring it back out, and I tell you, the dirtier it gets. The more dust we have on it, the more real it looks. <laughs> That's true. But it's a it's a tomb, and uh, the tomb that was given to Jesus by Joseph of Arimathea. Scripture tells us this is a representation of that in the play. And I can't tell you what just just a, a brilliant idea that was, Jerry, to well, put it on a trailer and bring it in. It, it just made it simple, you know. And that's where we want to keep what everybody else someday will be doing. Keep it simple. Don't don't complicate it. Think through it, use what you got, and it'll work. You know? Use what you got. Again, you have to have it for the presentation. You need to have a place to store it. And that's another element here that I've got to uh, communicate to you while we're, while we're creating the video. Jerry and Carlene have a business here in the Four Corners. They have a lot, and on that lot we store not one, not two, three semi-trailer loads full of props that have been created for this presentation it's a lot of love i'm telling you guys those trucks are full of love and without the help we receive from all the folks who created the props all the folks who store the props bring the props here we could never tell the story it's a great big family that we love with all of our hearts and i know you're going to love your family where you're working wherever that is. God bless you guys. Thanks for joining us today for a backstage tour of Passion Play of the Four Corners.